We are going to start off this DIY by going to our local hardware store and going and getting some tile. I ended up getting some white tile pieces along with also some black, and while you're there, get some concrete as well. Because the hardware store didn't have any red tile, I ended up over at Walmart and got some red, black, and also white gems. Now that we are back home, we are going to be doing most of this craft outside. What you're going to want to do before you pour any concrete is put some sort of plastic lining or something along those lines to go and protect your bowl. Now we're going to go and take some concrete. This cut milk cartridge could have worked if I did have less concrete that I was using, but I did end up switching over to a larger bowl, which you'll see in a little bit. The exact measurements are going to depend on what size of bowls you're using, and I kind of just eyed everything to go and measure it. I went, put some water in with the concrete, let it bubble for a couple of seconds, and then started mixing it. For the small and medium bowl, I did not wear any hand protection, and that's mainly because I didn't come into any contact with the actual concrete. But for the larger bowl, I did wear hand protection, and it's always important to do so, especially when you're working with concrete. So now that I have this in this small bowl, what I did was I went and I just tapped it down, moved it off to the side, and let it set. This one too, what I did was I filled it, but I didn't fill it the full and total way only because I wanted to keep it pretty round and this bowl really just kind of didn't have that shape that I wanted fully. Now for this largest bowl, what I did was I doubled up two plastic bags, pressed it down, then I put in the concrete after. Now, after about 24 hours, these have all set. What you do is you flip it over and this plastic lining here protects the bowl and keeps it nice and clean, which I absolutely love. And if you didn't use a plastic lining, you might have issues removing the concrete. Now we're going to go and remove the plastic. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try to pick out any little tiny pieces that are sticking up. Now I'm going to go and use some ready mixed concrete patch, and I'm using this because dry concrete, you can't put concrete onto unless you use some sort of primer. And this stuff is great because it's a primer, it's an adhesive, it works awesome, and it did such a great job for all of these. So you're going to go and cover the concrete, make sure to get every little tiny bump and crevice there, then I went and I sketched out the face of the ladybug, which was a half circle at the front, a line in the center, some little circles for where I wanted to go and put some of the white beads, along with also the eyes. Now let's go and break up some tile. I actually only ended up using the two black pieces that I had. I didn't use the white piece, but I got that just in case. What I did was I wrapped it in a canvas blanket, threw it on the ground, and then started smashing it with a metal tool. After it was smashed, there were some larger pieces along with also smaller pieces, and the largest pieces that I used, I used on the front of the ladybug here. Now I am using a little bit of Gorilla Glue. I noticed that the Gorilla Glue actually, after about 15 or so minutes, did stick. And also too, I realized that I could use the patch filler, patch adhesive concrete patch as actually an adhesive, which was great because then I didn't have to glue everything down. For the eyes though, and certain portions, I still did want to go and at least glue some of it. And this larger piece, it was just so much easier to glue only small pieces down, sort of like these little circles here, along with also some other pieces. When I was getting down to going and putting the red into place, I ended up using the patch filler just to go and get these all down. And after everything was down and it did adhere after about 15 to 20 minutes, then I went and I covered this. Now this patch adhesive, as soon as it dries, is kind of hard to get off of anything. So I wanted to go and put a good layer on there, have a wet towel, go and wipe this off. And then after that was wiped off, continue onto the front of the ladybug. Now, before everything set, I just wanted to go and put some little tiny pieces of the broken tile in just to fill some of the space. I really love how this ladybug family turned out. It is just so incredibly cute. And here is all three of them in a line. Did you know that Home Talk posts new videos every day? Hit subscribe to get inspired. Now on to the next DIY. Take your powdered cement or plaster and put it off to the side. Take just about two to three cups of water, put it into your bowl before you go and add any sort of dye or pigment to this. You're going to want to make sure you have extra water that is dyed off to the side so you can mix it in just in case you need it. Powdered pigment is best to use since the color will be more vibrant, and as your stepping stone fully sets, the color will become brighter. Add pigment into your water and mix it. 
I added just about a tablespoon of pigment into my water since the powder dye that I am using is very, very vibrant when it dries. Let the powder fully dissolve and fully mix it in. You also probably want to mix a couple extra cups of water, just have it off to the side or have extra water ready to roll just in case. Slowly add water into your powder mixture. Check the packaging for details on water ratio. Keep in mind quickery along with also concretes like that normally measure in actual weight in comparison to cups or any sort of measurement like that. It can be kind of hard to determine exactly how much water you should be adding, but the consistency for both plaster and also quickery or concrete would be very similar. Make sure to wear gloves when you're doing this and also be in a very well ventilated area. You want the consistency to be pancake batter like. So not very liquidy, but it should also still have some texture to it, but not be really, really solid or have large clumps. As you can see in this video, this is the consistency of what it should look like for both plaster along with also quickery. Once your quickery or plaster is fully mixed, scoop some into your mold and spread it around with your hand. Of course, do this with a gloved hand. Fill the container to about the half inch mark or higher. You don't want it thinner than just about half of an inch if you're going to actually step on these. Once you have it filled to your liking, tap your container a few times to flatten the mixture and take out extra air bubbles. After the mixture has sat in the mold for just about five minutes, take a doily and center it and press it down lightly. Use your gloved fingertips to press lightly along with also spread it out a bit. Wait the proper amount of time for this to set. It takes about 30 minutes for plaster to set and it takes about 30 to 40 minutes for quickrete to set, but not for it to fully set and fully dry. Pull the sides of your mold slowly to release the stepping stone. Flip the container upside down and hold the stepping stone in place. It will slowly release. To remove the doily, pull up on one end and slowly start peeling it up. Definitely go slow so you don't break anything or you don't rip the doily. You can take the doily and clean it and actually use it as a coaster as long as you used a dye that was fabric safe. After your stepping stone is fully dry, which can take up to 48 hours, bring it outside and line them up. You may notice that the color has brightened up. Please note Portland cement can support a lot more weight than plaster can. If you are making plaster stepping stones, you're going to want to make sure that you seal them and also use them more so for decoration in comparison to going and stepping on them. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!